So let's get Eric Mangini on here. Who's, so, so I think we should change the saying in Seattle from from let Russ cook to put some heat on Pete and get rid of that outdated offense. But you've always been a little critical of Russell Wilson. Well, first of all, I think that's a little unfair depiction of, of how I feel about Russell Wilson. But but I don't really understand where his, his uh, dissatisfaction is coming. I, I know Brian Schottenheimer, the offensive coordinator he had. He was my offensive coordinator in New York. He was going to let Russell Wilson have a ton of impact on the game plan. And look, the way it is, quarterbacks have a huge impact on the game plan. And then when you have a great quarterback, they have even more impact on the game plan. So now I know the new group that's that's in there. They're great guys. They'll let Russell have an impact on the game plan. They've won. He's won over nine games a year every year since he's been there. And what's what's his unhappiness? Well, what what problem does he have? They were twelve and four last year. I, I don't I don't get why he has this frustration with with Pete. Well, I mean, he's been sacked 400 times in nine years in NFL records. So he, I think what he's looking at is going, I'm getting hit a lot. Well, well, here's what I'll say about that is when, when you have a make something happen quarterback who's going to move around the pocket, the offensive line has a spot where they think the quarterback's going to be. When you change that spot, the offensive line is put into a bad situation. They, they can't see the D line can you know what else helps decrease sacks running the ball. And and when you don't want to run the ball, you're probably going to get sacked at a, at a higher percentage. But he he has responsibility for those things as well, and he's made a lot of great plays. But that comes with a higher percentage of sacks. That's that's not on the uh, all on the O line. That that's his responsibility too. Do he, he, my guess is he doesn't get traded. But is there one that you look at of the four and think that'd be that's probably the best fit for him? Yeah, as I as I look at those teams, I, I like him in Dallas. They they bring back almost everybody offensively. I think they lose. They've got one guy on the offensive line who who's a, a free agent, and you're in a division where there's no elite quarterback. You have the furthest uh, chance to improve the team. Were they six and ten last year? And and he brings something totally different to that equation than Dak does. He's so much more mobile than Dak. He's so much better at creating off off timing plays. I I think that would be a a really good spot for him, especially considering the division. All right. If you ran the Houston Texans today, so the general rule in sports is um, if a star tells you they want out, you're best to get it done behind the scenes when they go public especially if they have a no-trade clause. It can really limit a team. And, and I, I said this earlier. I went back to Lou Alcindor with Milwaukee, was an unbelievable player at a UCLA. He went to dinner with the team and said, I, I don't want to stay. And they got a haul from the Lakers. Paul George went public in Indy. They got nothing. He went private in Oklahoma City, and I want out. They got five players and a great point guard. Generally, you want to get – if a star says, I'm not playing – make calls and get it done so they don't go out there and tell everybody you're not going to come back. But that that's done. As they say, the horse is out of the barn on that. With all the information out there now, you ran the Texans. What would you do with Deshaun Watson? Well, there's an issue here. And Deshaun said that loyalty is everything. And I'm sure from an ownership perspective, you're looking at it as I drafted you in the first round. I extended you two years prior to, to when – I needed to gave you 170 million dollars, and you know you you talk about loyalty. That there's been loyalty from an organizational standpoint, and I know there's some frustration with what happened with JJ Watt. But JJ is at the end of his career, and and he's not a quarterback in in his prime. Who's as as good as Deshaun is? It, it's it's apples to oranges. I I don't think there's any thought organizationally to trading him. I think the fact that they're not taking calls and they're doing what they're doing, they're they're dug in. And this is going to have to get ugly on Deshaun's part for him to to move the dial here. I, 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 I believe what they're saying in Houston, that they're not going to trade him. And w- why would you? Why would you ever want to move him? Yeah. 
So Brady, I just saw a story this morning that Brady uh, is going to take another pay cut in Tampa. So, you know, it's funny. So you were there early. I don't remember. I don't remember his first 10 years talking about Tom Brady money. I don't even know how it went. You probably recall it. Go back to his first 10 years, his first couple contracts. Did he take the max he could get then? No, and that, that's one of the things that, that you love about Tom. You look at him now and you say, okay, he's not going to take uh, the, the top dollars. And you say, okay, he's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of success. That makes sense. But that's how Tom always has been. Like Tom, even from a very early age, understood that the more that he gets, the less the people around him can get and the less they can improve the team. And he was willing, he was willing to do that. The greatest story about Tom is when he first got famous, he got a commercial, I think it was a Visa or yes, Mas- Visa. Master card. Yeah. One of the things that, that he demanded was that his offensive line be in the commercial with him. He wanted to make sure that those guys got a chance to get a little bit of a taste, that those guys got some recognition. There's not many stars that say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not making a lot of money. I was a six-round draft pick. I'm finally getting a chance to get endorsements. But hold on, I want to give part of it to my offensive line. That that's how how he's wired, and he's done it for, forever. And and so you it, you may look at it now and be a little bit cynical because of how much he has. But this is this is who he is, and everybody around him, you know, you look at that, and and it makes sense for you to make some sacrifices. Yeah. So I'm gonna you used to coach the Jets. I'm gonna throw my theory at you. Okay, I love your theories. Now they're not as Joy says. They're not <laughs> conspiracy theories. They're just my theories. Okay. So I run the Jets today, which is my dream job, by the way. I'd hire you back, by the way, if I could. If I was Thanks. running the Jets, you bet. Yeah. Thanks. We've so, won a lot of games. <laughs> so <laughs> I would stay with Sam Darnold for this reason. So I'm going to draft a Mountain West quarterback. I got to face Belichick twice a year, best defensive coach ever. Brian Flores, who looks like a rock star defensive coach. Sean McDermott, as you well know, very well respected as a defensive coach. Okay, so I've got six games a year in division with a rookie quarterback with the best three of the top four defensive coaches in football, maybe the top three. I got to be honest with you. (laughs) I would keep Darnold. I would get what I could get for the second pick, which includes, you know, I could get uh, maybe a, a draft picks and a player, actually, a corner and solve that issue. I can make a compelling argument is. I don't want to go back to a rookie quarterback in that division with all those defensive coaches. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think you have to look at it as as not being rookie or, or not rookie, but being whether or not what he's done to this point is, has been underachieving. And, you know, we saw Tannehill with, with Adam Gase, and he went somewhere different, and, and things changed. And and maybe this is the, the same situation for, for Darnold. But to have that that pick and be able to trade it back for not just draft capital this year, but draft capital moving forward, if you feel like Sam Darnold can improve on on what he's done, it it makes it makes all the sense in the world. And you can you can dramatically change the team by by gathering those draft picks, both short term and long term. Now the issue I have with, with Darnold is that that fifty fifty touchdown to interception ratio. Yeah. He he's close to that. He was kind of that way in college, yeah. and you haven't seen a lot of progress. Now that scares you with the volume of defensive coordinators that we talked about and how good they are. Yeah, and they've got more and more of a book on them every year that he plays. Well, that's that's pretty smart there. I like that argument. That's a pretty good argument. They have more of a book on him. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, that made sense. That, that that works for you. And and here's the other thing I'd say is if there's a quarterback that you believe can can truly be a, a franchise quarterback and you've got a guy that you're uncertain on, you, you gotta take a chance on the quarterback. You know, hopefully you won't be drafting in the spot that the Jets are drafting in, you know, anytime soon. But if that guy's there and you you're you feel strongly about him, regardless of who you have, you, you gotta make that move. Did you ever draft a quarterback? I drafted Kellen Clemens in the second round. He, uh, I think he ended up playing 11 or 12 years in, in the league. Um, didn't, didn't quite get to where we want him to get to, but he had a long, long career. I know. I saw him in you, high school. You'd, lo- you'd love the guy. Oh, I know. I saw him in oh. high school. Bend, Oregon. He was, dad was a rancher. He played safe. Yeah. He was an all-state safety. He was tough as a $5 steak. Tough kid. I loved he, him. 
tough, great kid, uh, great career. Yep. Yeah. Well, Oregon people are all nice people. That's where I'm from mostly, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Mangini, good talking to you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.